Good morning, everyone. I'm so glad that you could be with us this morning as we praise and glorify our King, the Lord of the universe. We um, just want to get down to it. We want to open up our hearts and our minds and receive what he has for us so we can make changes that we need to make or we can just learn to draw closer to him because closer to God is always the best place to be. This morning's word will be coming from Isaiah 29, 13. The Lord says, these people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is based on merely human rules they have been taught. And I've titled this message, Honoring God. And what I particularly like about this scripture is that Jesus quotes it in the New Testament, because a lot of people feel if you're, preaching from the Old Testament and it's not carried over into the New Testament that maybe it's not valid for us today. But Jesus says right here in Mark 7, 6, Isaiah prophesied correctly about you hypocrites as it is written. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Nothing had changed from Isaiah's time to this day in Jesus' life. People were still having trouble honoring God, the God of the universe, maker of all things and judge of all men. After all those years, people are still pretending to be holy. God had chosen a people for himself gave them a standard from which to live by, saved them from oppression and death, but still, people didn't believe. Their faith was flaky and trusting the Lord non-existent. And here we are today, thousands of years later, talking about the same thing as people continue to dishonor God. My Bible says that true worship must begin with a proper reverence for God and his word. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain, and this is our God speaking. They teach as doctrine the precepts of men. Psalm 4.2, David says, speaking on behalf of God, O ye sons of men. How long shall my glory be turned into dishonor? And the New Living Translation put it like this. How long will you people ruin my reputation? It is God's reputation that's at stake. Why would anyone want to be with God after watching some of us conduct our everyday lives? No one wants someone that no one wants. And I said this just like in a, in a regular relationship with, with an individual. You know, if um, everybody's looking at your boyfriend or everybody's looking at your husband, that's really nice because he belongs to me. But when God looks at some of us, our wickedness looks so bad, they don't want God. There's nothing to draw them to God. And we got to watch that. There is no benefit in serving God if we are doing the same thing as the ungodly. Some might say, with God, I have to follow a whole lot of rules. But if there is no difference in us, why do I need to bother with those rules? And I'm getting ready to read a scripture from Malachi. It's Malachi 1 verses 6 through 14. It's a little lengthy, but I think we need to hear it. A son honors his father and a slave his master. If I am a father, where is the honor due me? If I am a master, where is the respect due me? Says the Lord Almighty. It is you priests 
who show contempt for my name. But you ask, how have we shown contempt for your name? By offering defiled food on my altar. But you ask, how have we defiled you? You know, a back and forth in God's face. By saying that the Lord's table is contemptible. When you offer blind animals for sacrifice, is that not wrong? When you sacrifice lame or diseased animals, is that not wrong? Try offering them to your governor. Would he be pleased with you? Would he accept you, says the Lord Almighty? Now plead with God to be gracious to us. With such offerings from your hands will he accept you, says the Lord Almighty. Oh, that one of you would shut the temple doors so that you would not light useless fires on my altar. I am not pleased with you, says the Lord Almighty, and I will accept no offering from your hands. My name will be great among the nations, from where the sun rises to where it sets. In every place, incense and pure offerings will be brought to me, because my name will be great among the nations, says the Lord Almighty. But you profane it by saying, the Lord's table is defiled, and its food is contemptible. And you say, what a burden and you sniff at it contemptuously, says the Lord Almighty. When you bring injured and lamed or diseased animals and offer them as sacrifices, should I accept them from your hands, says the Lord? And then this is from me. When you're living outside of the will of God, you are in grave danger. And the Lord says in verse 14 of this scripture, Curse is the cheat who has an acceptable male in his flock and vows to give it, but then sacrifices a blemished animal to the Lord. For I am a great king, says the Lord Almighty, and my name is to be feared among the nations. We can't go throwing our rubbish, things that we don't want, and try to give them to the Lord. God wants everything that we give him to be pure and holy and acceptable. Isaiah 111 says, the multitude of your sacrifices, what are they to me, says the Lord? I have more than enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fattened animals. I have no pleasure in the blood of bulls and lambs and goats. God is sick of those types of sacrifices. He now wants you. He wants living sacrifices that are holy and pleasing to him. And he wants the sacrifice to be offered to him. He doesn't want you to come to him grudgingly with prayers that you've learned from just going to church. God wants our hearts. But people have a problem with that because we want to be where our hearts are comfortable, whether a good place or a bad place. That's why there's so much adultery and broken marriages. When I was writing this, I thought about uh, the movie, Why Did I Get Married? And they talked about the 80-20 rule. Uh, the 20 satisfies the heart. So I'm leaving the 80% and I'm going with the 20%. But they don't realize that 20% only satisfies temporarily. And I know it says somewhere in the Bible, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where they are long lasting. The heart must be satisfied through Jesus Christ. A satisfied heart doesn't seek after other things. It's satisfied. It's content. 
God's complaint against his people was that they knew how to look holy, but they did not act holy because their hearts were somewhere else, so far away from the Lord. God wants close contact with his people and he deserves all that he asks for. He advises us to consider our ways and to commune with our hearts, examine ourselves before he has to examine us because then we're gonna have a problem. Compare what we do in a day with God's word and see how we measure up. Look closely at things we do wrong so we can repent and not repeat. My Bible says, compose yourselves into a serious frame. In other words, be still. When you have asked conscience, and they use conscience as a noun, if you have asked conscience a question, be silent and wait for an answer. In our prayers, we do a lot of talking, but not enough listening. God's people held on to the foolish belief that they could hide from God. God says, woe to those who seek to hide their counsel far from me and their works in the dark. They say, who can see us? Who knows us? God called them rebellious children who get their advice from everyone but him. They hide from God because his plans don't fit into their plans. They're not of the same spirit. The Bible said that they were heaping up sin upon sin. And this is what they wanted to do. They wanted to go back to the enemy, go back to Egypt and get assistance from them. Never get assistance from the enemy. And I like what it says. It says, they set out to go down to Egypt without asking my advice to seek shelter under Pharaoh's protection and take refuge in Egypt's shade. If we follow their example, we seek to manipulate God rather than submitting to God. So changing what is wrong within us is painful challenging and difficult, but it can be done. We don't want to live wrong. We want to live righteous lives that honor God. We must not only cease to do evil, and this is what my Bible says, but we must learn to do well. Some of us have been nasty for so long, we don't even know how to be nice. We use excuses like, I'm just having a bad day. Being kind takes effort. You have to desire it and then move forward in it. The Lord has called us to do good in any and every situation. We will get angry sometimes, but we can't allow that anger to lead to death. The Bible says, whatever you do, Work at it with all your heart, as if working for the Lord. As if you could see God sitting in his office. Some of us serve the Lord as if he's not real, just some mystical character that we say a few words to each day. We should be able to feel love for God in our hearts the same way we feel love for our children, our spouses, our relatives, but deeper. Because I have never said this to my children or anyone else I love, only to the Lord. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. And I'm just going to end with Revelation 4, 10, and 11. You are worthy, O Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. 
For you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. I love you, Lord. Amen.